The UI components package contains reusable elements of the user interface. Since this is a very small app, the only two such elements are a toolbar and a loading screen. One of the great features of Compose is that we can make our components reusable in different ways. Firstly, if a component needs to be positioned according to where it fits in different parent composables or parent screens, we can pass in a modifier instead of creating a modifier within the child composable. This is worth experimenting with in case you haven't already. Secondly, it is possible to pass in composables as arguments, which also allows reuse and extension of functionality. In this app, we want different toolbar icons for the two different UI screens, and we can achieve this by passing in the icon composables from those parent UI screens. You'll see later on how we can specify and handle different icons and different click events using the same toolbar. We'll also create this reusable loading screen, and later I will show you how to animate it. Right-click on the UI package and go to New Package, and this one's going to be called Components. Just a brief explanation here. I've adopted this particular convention from the Compose Samples repository. So what I'll go into this particular folder are composables which will end up being reusable across a variety of different UI elements and different screens. In this case, we're going to be creating a reusable toolbar and also a reusable loading screen. Right click on the components folder and go to new Kotlin file. And this one's going to be called app toolbar. Let's create our function stub. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type comp and then the autocomplete will create a composable function. This one's going to be called app toolbar. First, let's write the parameter list and I'll explain it a little bit. Make sure you select the compose.ui modifier. Let's start by talking a little bit about modifiers. So modifiers are basically how you can create most of the style, size, and position kind of data for a particular composable. Now there's kind of two different main ways to do this. We could of course create this modifier and use it within this widget, but that would be for a situation when the widget itself is going to be deciding that kind of information. Since we're using a reusable component here, an app toolbar, which we plan to use in multiple different places, in this particular situation, we're going to pass the modifier into this function, which is a way of basically saying that the parent composable will actually decide where to position and how to size this particular UI element. The title is pretty self-explanatory, but what is a little more complicated is the icon. And again, that will be dictated by something in the parent composable. That's how I actually make this thing reusable and allow it to handle different icons or different actions when it's clicked. After we finish off this particular composable, I'll show you a quick preview of the actual icon that we'll be using, so hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense. The first thing we want to do is override the top app bar composable. Let's just pause a moment and talk about different colors. So one way to solve this problem would be to hard code some kind of color in here. But in the previous section of this tutorial, we went through the trouble of setting up both a light and dark theme. So what we're doing here is we're actually going to be using a color which is based on the theme. Remember in the Graph Sudoku theme composable, uh, there was a call to a function which was is system and dark theme or something like that. And that's actually going to dictate which color palette we select. So by using material theme.colors.primary, it will automatically inherit the appropriate color based on whether we're in light and dark mode. And that would be one reason to avoid hard coding something in here. In this case, we have a color which will be the same regardless of whether it's light or dark mode.
So we're just going to add in a text composable, which is effectively a text view. But if you wanted to add something like a logo for the application in front or after the title text, then what you could do is you could add in a row here and then just add in both the icon and then the text composable, and then you'd be ready to go. Go ahead and import that. This is probably pretty self-explanatory, but when we want to inherit style data for particular fonts and stuff like that, then this is how we can do it. Again, this is something super handy and you only see this in Kotlin, certainly not Java. So what we're doing here is we're explicitly asking, is the application currently in light mode? And then we're picking a text color based on that. This is really just an alternative way of handing this conditional UI logic without having to assign something to a theme specifically. Next, we'll deal with alignment. And that's it for the text composable in our toolbar. So action bar is probably something that will be more familiar to the older Android developers, but basically think of this as like the icons within the toolbar. Generally, they're used for very important actions in the user interface, like navigating to a new feature, uh, indicating that you're done doing something. And note importantly that this particular Lambda function is of type row scope. So basically what that means is if you have several action buttons, you can place them within these two brackets here and they will automatically be lined up like a row. Now, all we need to do is just type icon and then add in the parentheses here. And this is because we're actually going to be passing this icon in from the parent composables. As I said moments ago, I just wanted to give you a sneak preview of the icon itself. We're not going to be writing it yet, but we will do so later on. The important thing to understand here is that we're deciding about how to handle on click and what this thing actually looks like in the parent composables. We're not actually doing it within the toolbar. And by pulling that responsibility out of the toolbar, that's how we get the reusability that we want. Right click on the components package, go to new Kotlin file, and this one's going to be called loading screen. Let's create our loading screen composable. The first thing we'll need is a surface. So you might be wondering, why are we using a surface here in particular? In this case, I really just want like a space a surface of the UI, which has a particular color and specific dimensions. Here I've set fill max height to a fraction of 0.8F, which is basically saying I want it to take up most of the width, or sorry, most of the height of the user interface, but I might want some space for something like a, an ad banner or something of that nature. Anyways, I basically want an icon or an image which is stacked on top of a progress bar which will be stacked on top of some kind of like text. So for that kind of situation, obviously we're going to want to use a column. Obviously, we'll be centering things. Go ahead and import that.
Now I'm noticing it's not properly importing R. I think there's something within the Compose libraries which basically mimics R. So let me just fix those imports before we proceed. As you can see here, I've just copy and pasted in the R import and now we're good to go. That's our logo. There's our progress bar. Okay, so you might be wondering about this painter thing. So basically in the alpha version of Compose, we had to specify whether it was a vector asset or a bitmap asset and stuff like that. So we can just use this generic painter resource thing and point it to basically anything in our drawable and it will actually figure out whether it's a bitmap or a vector asset. Also, I wanted to point out the copy function here. Suppose you have a color and you want to slightly change the alpha value or you have one of these textile objects and you want to make some kind of change to it. The copy function is super handy for doing that. 